As more and more places in the United States implement mask mandates, it's important we understand the science behind masks and the effectiveness of even a simple cloth mask. In this video, I'll present a decent number of sources, both studies and topical summaries, from researchers on the efficacy of mask wearing. This first study takes a look at statistically significant declines in coronavirus growth rates when mask orders were put in place in Washington, D.C., among other states. They specifically found that mandating face mask use in the public is associated with a decline in the daily coronavirus growth rate the further removed you got from that initial order. The estimates from their study suggest that 230,000 to 450,000 coronavirus cases were possibly averted by May 22nd thanks to the implemented orders. The next study takes a look at statistically significant decrease in respiratory droplet shedding seen in a randomized mask wearing trial study. To understand that a little simpler, it's just understanding how many droplets can be reduced when a person sneezes or coughs by wearing a mask. Looking at these graphs the study collected, we can see comparing not wearing a mask and wearing a mask among different viruses and illnesses in the droplets that the study found. You can see that significant drop between not wearing a mask to wearing a mask. The next study, rather than conducting experiments themselves, took a look at the data we have from a global analysis examining the correlation between per capita death rate and mandatory mask orders. In this graph right here, we can actually see that the longer a county waited to implement a mandatory mask order increased their per capita death rate. The duration of infection without masks on the x-axis and then on the y-axis is the mortality rate per capita. You can see that if a county implemented mask orders pretty fast or if people wore masks pretty fast after the outbreak, their per capita death rate was pretty low. But the longer counties waited to implement those restrictions, the higher their respective death rate was, that line in the middle being the trend line of the scatter plot. The next bit of research looking again at global and regional data found that 80% mask wearing in a population could probably be more effective than a strict lockdown. Looking at this graph from the study, we can see how various responses to a coronavirus outbreak would probably fare based on predictive models. Social distancing being that gray line, indicating a significant amount of deaths if we just social distance after initial lockdowns. Those bottom three lines are three different responses though, the blue line being a strict lockdown, which does pretty good. You can see there's no coronavirus death rate after a pretty strict lockdown, but you'll also note that it takes about 150 days to completely flatten out. If we look at 50% mask wearing, we can see that it initially does better than a strict lockdown, but eventually the death rate does grow higher, but it's still pretty statistically better than just social distancing. The best, though, is when 80% of a population wears a mask after the ending of strict lockdowns. It only takes about 100 days to completely flatten the death rate, and it works better than everything else. This next study examined the effectiveness of various mask materials in comparison to the baseline of an N95 mask. While the study is quite dense, if you look at these two graphs, you can see how each respective mask and type fared versus the N95 baseline. The next study correlates the growth in coronavirus cases to a county or region's unrecognized importance of airborne virus transmission protocols. Explained a little more simply, the researchers found that a failure in containing the propagation of coronavirus worldwide can largely be attributed to the unrecognized importance of how easily the virus spreads through the air. The researchers said that social distancing and washing hands must continue, but it's really not effective enough on its own to stop the spread. Wearing a face mask as well as practicing that good hygiene is probably the best way to reduce the chances of anyone contracting coronavirus. This next source, while not specifically a scientific study, is an article from Wired that does a pretty good job demonstrating the double standard or differing opinions in the scientific research validating whether masks are good or bad. They specifically address various studies that found that wearing masks did nothing to stop the coronavirus, but then also presented the alternative in why we now understand that wearing masks is probably a good idea in reference to the outbreak. In an effort to present both sides, though I understand this is severely weighted in the pro-mask category, I did also want to present a study from the Annals of Internal Medicine that showed that surgical masks and cotton masks completely did not work against stopping SARS-CoV-2 spread. 
However, I also want to call out while this was one of the main studies cited back in April that masks don't work and people generally still use the data from it today, while most people probably saw the research, they probably missed the subsequent retraction of that article after the researchers realized that they had neglected some pretty significant scientific and virological standards in their testing. Specifically, the researchers and publishers of the article noted that according to recommendations by the editors of the Annals of Internal Medicine, we're retracting our article. We'd not fully recognized the concept of limit of detection, or LOD, of the in-house reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction used in the study, and they regret their failures to express the values of LOD as less than LOD. You can continue reading, but in essence, it's just the researchers recognizing that they made some errors and their data shouldn't be trusted. I'll also link below to a video that does a pretty good job of explaining how masks work and why and how they can stop particles, even non-N95 masks. Specifically speaking, it also calls out how N95 masks work and why they actually do the worst at preventing the intake of medium-sized particles. They do really good at small particles and pretty good at large particles, but it's actually the medium particles that move with the flow of the air that manage to make their way through N95 masks. It also notes that stopping virus spread in those particles in the air from just a general cloth mask can be done through electric charge, and why wearing a cloth mask can still be a pretty good idea in preventing the spread of coronavirus. Lastly, I want to link a good question and answer post from a pretty reliable source, Stanford Medicine. While not a specific scientific study, it does a pretty good job breaking down differing questions that you might have on mask guidelines, specifically on how do cloth face coverings prevent the spread of coronavirus, all the way to what's the best way to make and use a mask. Lastly, it's important to note that reading and understanding scientific studies is not an easy task. They're not written for the general public, they're written for researchers. This underscores the significant need for good STEM communication in the media. It's taken me four years of working as a technical author to feel generally comfortable reading scientific studies and understanding their scope. That's on top of a technical undergrad education as well. I also want to acknowledge that there are studies indicating that there is no statistically significant decrease in infection rates from wearing a mask like the one we mentioned before. In science, there should always be a differing perspective to your research. If you only examine the viewpoints and research that support your already held assumptions, you're just not doing good science. Unfortunately, it's also rather easy to cherry pick research that backs up an already held belief on mask wearing in this given climate. Examining the research objectively is a pretty hard task, especially in the divisive climate currently in the US. At the end of the day, this means that we must resist the urge to base opinions on one source, but rather take into account various sources, be that studies, professional recommendations, and even opposing viewpoints. If we operate under the assumption that there's only a 1% chance that wearing a mask will halt the spread of the virus, there's still an ethical argument to be made for wearing one. It's the same reason we, as a society, are okay with speeding laws or traffic laws and other laws of the sort. At the end of the day, we're all in hard times, and the only way we'll make it through this without spurning a greater divide is by operating as a community and by loving our neighbor. Drawing back to the original intent of this video, spreading a technical understanding of mask efficacy, it's important you don't take this video's or any other source's independent word for any perspective. Draw from consensus, from a variety of technical sources, from a variety of unbiased viewpoints, and if you go into the research with a belief on masks already, make it a point to examine the opposing side without internal unconscious bias, as hard as that may be. If you've done all that and still disagree with the implied conclusion of this video, fantastic. Disagreement and interpretation is part of science, it's what drives innovation forward and directs our path. Hopefully this video helped you in understanding why wearing a mask can be effective against coronavirus and why mass adoption of mask wearing is probably a pretty good idea in the current environment.